Good morning. In this section, we begin to lay the foundation for mathematical proofs. We define an argument, premise, and fallacy so that we can determine if an argument is valid. We also discuss the several forms of valid arguments. For example, we discuss modus ponens and modus tollens. As in previous lectures, we conclude with several exercises from our text. Here are several terms and their def definitions. Argument is a sequence of statements that ends with a conclusion. Valid, the conclusion or final statement of an argument must follow from the truth of the preceding statements or premises of the argument. Premise, a statement of the argument. Fallacy, incorrect reasoning. Valid arguments in propositional logic. An argument in propositional logic is a sequence of propositions. All but the final proposition are called premises, and the final proposition is called the conclusion. An argument is valid if the truth of all of its premises implies that the conclusion is true. An argument form in propositional logic is a sequence of compound propositions involving propositional variables. An argument form is valid if no matter which particular propositions are substituted for the propositional variables in its premises, the conclusion is true if the premises are all true. Consider premises P1 through Pn and the conclusion Q. The conclusion is valid when the conjunction of all the premises implies the conclusion is a tautology. Rules of inference for propositional logic. The tautology P and the quantity P implies Q implies Q is the basis of the rule of inference called modus ponens or the law of detachment. Modus ponens is Latin for mode that affirms. This tautology leads to the following valid argument form. Please recall that the three dots denote therefore. We have P, P implies Q, therefore Q. Example one, suppose that the conditional statement, if it snows today, then we will go skiing, and its hypothesis, it is snow, snowing today, are true. Then by modus ponens, it follows that the conclusion of the conditional statement, we will go skiing, is true. Q, we will go skiing. P, it is snowing today. P implies Q, if it snows today, we will go skiing. Therefore, we will go skiing. Example two. Determine whether the argument here is valid and determine whether its conclusion must be true because of the valid validity of its argument. If the square root of 2 is greater than 3 halves, then the square root of 2 squared is greater than 3 halves squared. We know that the square root of 2 is greater than 3 halves. Consequently, when the square root of 2 squared equals 2 is greater than 3 halves 9 quarters, p is the square root of 2 is greater than 3 halves. Q, 2 is greater than 9 fourths. Argument, P greater than Q, P, therefore Q. The argument form is valid because it matches modus ponens. However, one of its premises, the square root of 2 is greater than 3 halves, is false. Consequently, we cannot conclude the conclusion 2 is greater than 9, nine quarters is true. The conclusion is, in fact, false because 2 is less than 9 fourths. Example 3. State which rule of inference is the basis of the following argument. It is below freezing now, therefore it is either below freezing or raining now. Propositions. P. It is below freezing now. Q. It is raining now. Argument. P. Therefore, P or Q. The argument form is addition. So Table 1 illustrates uh, the rules of inference which you can observe yourself. And the names of these are modus ponens, modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, disjunctive syllogism, addition, simplification, conjunction, and resolution. We will be using these valid uh, rules of inference in our uh, arguments as we construct them later on in this lecture. Example four. State which rule of inference is the basis 
of the following argument. It is below freezing and raining now, therefore it is below freezing now. Propositions P, it is raining now. Q, it is below freezing now. P and Q, it is below freezing and raining now. The argument is P and Q, it is below freezing and raining now. Therefore, Q, it is below freezing now. The argument is simplification. And we can see this right uh, here as one of our valid argument forms. Example five. State which rule of inference is the basis of the following argument. If it rains today, then we will not have a barbecue today. If we do not have a barbecue today, then we will have a barbecue tomorrow. Therefore, if it rains today, then we will have a barbecue tomorrow. Solution, propositions. P, it rains today. Q, we will have a barbecue today. R, we will have a barbecue tomorrow. The argument is P implies not Q. If it rains today, we will not have a barbecue today. Not Q implies R. If we do not have a barbecue today, then we will not have a barbecue tomorrow. Therefore, P implies R. If it rains today, then we will have the barbecue tomorrow. The argument is hypothetical syllogism. Using rules of inference to build arguments. Show that the hypothesis, it is not sunny this afternoon and it is colder than yesterday. We will go swimming only if it is sunny. If we do not go swimming, then we will take a canoe trip, and if we take a canoe trip, then we will be home by sunset, lead to the conclusion we will be home by sunset. Here are our propositions. P, it is sunny this afternoon. Q, it is colder than yesterday. R, we will not go, we will go swimming. S, we will take a canoe trip, and T, we will be home by sunset. The argument then is not P and Q, it is not sunny this afternoon and it is colder than yesterday. R implies P, we will go swimming, swimming only if it's sunny. Not R implies S, we, if we do not go swimming then we will take a canoe trip. And S implies T, we will take, if we take a canoe trip then we will be home by sunset. Therefore T, we will be home by sunset. So in our analysis, we take step one, not P and Q, that's the hypothesis, not P, and we get that out of step one by simplification. R implies P, that's a hypothesis, not R, modus tollens using steps two and three. Hypothesis is not R implies S, S, modus ponens using steps four and five. S implies T, hypothesis, and T, Modus ponens using six and seven. Resolution. Computer programs have been developed to automate the task of reasoning and proving theorems. Many of these programs make use of a rule of inference known as resolution. This rule of inference is based on the tautology of the quantity P or Q and the quantity not P or R implies Q or R. Example 8. Use resolution to show that the hypothesis Jasmine is skiing or it is not snowing and it is snowing or Bart is playing hockey imply that Jasmine is skiing or Bart is playing hockey. Solution. Propositions T. Jasmine is skiing. U. It is snowing. V. Bart is playing hockey. Argument, T or not U, Jasmine is skiing or it is not snowing. U or V, it is snowing or Bart is playing hockey. T, therefore, T or V, Jasmine is skiing or Bart is playing hockey. So when we put that together, we see that it is exactly the uh, resolution tautology. One, because the AND operator is commutative, we can exchange the two expressions enclosed in the square braces. Two, because the OR operator is commutative, we can exchange the two propositions T and not U. And we note that the argument form is the same as the resolution argument if U is substituted for P and V is substituted for Q and T is substituted for R. 
Fallacies. Fallacies are incorrect arguments. Consider the following fallacies. P implies Q and Q implies P. This is the fallacy of affirming the conclusion. P implies Q and not P implies not Q. Fallacy of denying the hypothesis. Example 10. Is the following argument valid? If you do every problem in this book, then you will learn discrete mathematics. You learn discrete mathematics. Therefore, you did every problem in the book. Propositions. P, you did every problem in the book. Q, you learned discrete mathematics. Argument. P implies Q. Q, you learned discrete mathematics. Therefore, P. Therefore, you did every problem of the book. This is an example of an incorrect argument using the fallacy of affirming the conclusion. Indeed, it is possible for you to learn discrete mathematics in some other way than by doing every problem in the book. You may learn discrete mathematics by reading and listening to lectures, doing some but not all the problems in the book, and so on. Example 11. Let P and Q be as in example 10. If the conditional statement P implies Q is true and not P is true, is it correct to conclude that not Q is true? In other words, is it correct to assume that you did not learn discrete mathematics if you did not do every problem in the book, assuming that if you do every problem in this book, then you will learn discrete mathematics? Solution. It is possible that you learn discrete mathematics even if you did not do every problem in this book. The incorrect argument is of the form P implies Q. If you did every problem in the book, then, then you learned discrete mathematics. Not P, you did not do every problem in the book. Not Q, therefore you did not learn discrete mathematics. This is an example of an incorrect argument using the fallacy of denying the hypothesis. Rules of inference for quantified statements. For all x, p of x, universal instantiation, therefore p of c, p of c for an arbitrary c, therefore for all x, p of x, universal generalization, p of c for some element c, excuse me, there, there exists x, p of x, therefore p of c for some element c, existential instantiation, P of C for some element C, there exists X, P of X, and existential generalization. Universal instantiation. The rule of inference that is used to conclude P of C of true, where C is a particular member of the domain given the premise for all X, P of X. Example, we can conclude that Lisa, a woman, is wise from the premise, all women are wise. Universal generalization. The rule of inference that states for all x p of x is true given the premise p of c of true for all elements c in the domain. Universal generalization is used when we show that for all x p of x is true by taking an arbitrary element c from the domain and showing that p of c is true. The element c that we select must be arbitrary and not specific and not a specific element of the domain. That is when we assert for all x, p of x from the existence of an element c in the domain, we have no control over c and cannot make any other assumptions about c other than it comes from the domain. Example, we conclude that all women are wise if we select Lisa arbitrarily from all women and find that she is wise. Existential instantiation. The rule of inference that allows us to conclude that there is an element C in the domain for which P of C is true if we know there is an element C in the domain for which P of C is true if we know that there exists P of X is true. We cannot select an arbitrary value of C here but rather it must be C for which P of C is true. Usually we have no knowledge of what C is only that it exists. Because it exists we may give it a name, C, and continue our argument. Example, from the statement that there exists a woman who is wise, we can conclude that there is a particular woman who is wise, and by testing women, we found a particular woman, Lisa, who is wise. Existential generalization. We'll have to discuss that in our next lecture.